Ladies and gentlemen, boys and enemies, welcome back to Modern Warfare 3 and let's talk about multiplayer, primarily search and destroy because that is what I play the most. I'm going to break down your loadout, your kit, your kill streaks, everything to have the best time in multiplayer, be it search and destroy or respawn such as domination, kill confirmed or anything in between. Before we get started, make sure to like the video because you have no idea how much this truly helps the channel and subscribe if you're new here because we would love to have you. Visit Discord in the description below if you would like to get more information on all of the modes from Warzone to multiplayer to even zombies. Black Ops 6 coming out, it's going to be a great year. On that note, let's get into it now that you've liked the video. Okay, so first and foremost, let's talk kill streaks. So what I have here is my kill streaks for playing Search and Destroy. I'm going to use the UAV, the IMS, and then the new drone of the loitering munition. Now I am going to change this for respawn modes like kill confirmed, dom, or anything else. And I'm actually going to drop the IMS because the IMS is used to defend a bomb site. I'm going to drop the UAV, however you can keep the UAV. If you don't want to use the UAV, I would use the Overwatch helicopter and the VTOL. And the reason I'm using these three is I actually call all three of them in together if I get all three. You can use the loitering munition to protect your Overwatch and your VTOL and lock a map down, and I'm not kidding, get 40 kills. Other options that you can swap out is you can run the SAE instead of the VTOL, or like I said, you can drop the VTOL and run a UAV. However, for S and D, we are going to run the IMS, the UAV, and the loitering munition, because this just gives us the most power to win rounds within S and D. The next thing we need to talk about is kit setup, and there are two ways that I set these up, and that is based on vest. It is either the assassin's vest, which obviously is going to keep you off of UAVs, as well as make you not show enemy skulls. This is fantastic, because you want to be quite quiet when you're moving around the map so people don't know where you are. The other setup that I will use absolutely, however, is I will switch over and run the compression carrier, which immediately starts health regeneration when you cap or kill someone. It also reduces the strength of flash, stun, and gas grenades. Shock sticks are immune, EMPs immune, snapshots immune. Not a big deal there. However, we do lose our field upgrade here, but that's okay. With gloves, I always run commando. You can swap over and use the marksman gloves if you're using a sniper or DMR. I just don't really see a point as I build in stability into my guns. So I keep with the commando because commando is just so good. The ability to reload while sprinting and upping your sprint to fire is incredible. Another good option is the assault gloves. You can use these as well if you're going to be jumping around a lot. I'm not really looking for that. And the ADS improvement, like I said, I build for that. So the sprint to fire is just better as well as reloading while sprinting. Always running flashbangs. They're just the best option in my book. And I will run typically a standard grenade this is my kit for killing a riot shield. However, I typically run the standard grenade because if you cook it, you will almost always get the kill. And then to deal with the riot shield, use the thermite. Other good options are the prox mine if you're a little rat. And then of course, there's the throwing knife. We all know what it does. It's a lot of fun. I do throw it on to have a good time. Trophy system is the only field upgrade I'm gonna run because I, I just, it's good. I don't know what else to say. We covered commando gloves. Of course, you have to use covert sneakers. There is nothing better than covert sneakers. And then, of course, EOD padding is wonderful. And if you see you're in a game where people are not throwing a lot of grenades, then you can take off EOD padding and throw on mag holster. I really do like using the mag holster for the improved reload. This is absolutely wonderful. But the rest of this, I just, I, I don't care. These are the ones that I run, and they're the only things that I will swap between. So let's get into guns. All right, so to start off, there are three pistols that I use, and I do want to break those down, and I'm going to break them down together. These are the sidearm options if you don't run a knife or other melee. I personally always run a pistol, but that is entirely up to you. The first option here is the Core 45, which the Core 45 is wonderful. And for this, we are going to use the HMRES mod suppressor just to up our velo a little bit and keep us off the map if we have to use this. The XRK Pyre 9 heavy long barrel to up our range, push our velo once again. The Vernant hook mounted laser for the aim down sight, sprint to fire, etc. Tactical grip cover so we can quick pull this, only really using it when we run out of ammo and our AR, and then the XRK V6 match trigger to up our fire rate. This is very good in a pinch. If you run out of ammo in a fight, you can actually quick pull this and win the fight. If you're good with a pistol, it is also able to be used on its own. And I do use pistols behind my sniper, obviously. However, I don't typically use this one. What I use is my personal favorite pistol, which is the 9mm Damon. The Damon is just as good as the Core 45, the Renetti, any of the standard pistols. This is just the one that I choose. It has 
15 rounds. It has a hyper fast fire rate. It is just good everywhere. And the build here is very, very similar. We've got the HMRES mod suppressor for the velo and suppression. However, we're going to use the EXF Opal 9 barrel to up our aim down and sprint out. We're not really going to lose much range here. It's a pistol. Doesn't matter. The KR HX15 laser for the ADS, sprint to fire, etc. Damon hand so we can quick draw this and then the rapid 30 trigger to maximize our fire rate, which this gun does have a higher fire rate than the core 45 and takes the same amount of shots to kill. However, if you're going to run a sniper and you want to have something that feels more like a submachine gun behind it, run the stinger because the stinger is still really good. Yes, you can't put an optic on it, but once you figure out the irons, it is a very, very good gun. And with this build, we're going to start with a shatter strike suppressor so we can just stay off the mini map. We don't need anything else in our barrel. You want to run the sonic suppressor, you're more than welcome. I just like having the sprint out time. KRHX 15 laser light so we can aim down sight, sprint to fire, etc. 32 round mag is absolutely needed here because we're using an SMG. It's just in the pistol category. Factory stock so we can get our recoil under control and a little bit of stability. And then of course the TAC 20 grip so we can quick draw this gun. Also up our ADS a bit. Stinger is absolutely viable in all of MP modes. Just make sure you are running it behind a good gun. And as we move on, let's get the obvious out of the way. Let's talk about the MCW. This is actually what I keep on my Riot Shield Killer class, so it, it just makes sense to have this with the Thermite. You absolutely decimate the lobby. And for this build, once again, start with the Shatter Strike Suppressor because we just want to stay off of the map. That's all we're worried about. The FTAC SP10 Angled Grip because we not only get the horizontal recoil, but we also get aim stability out of it. You can use the Paracord here. It's basically up to you which one of these grips you use. We've got the RB Precision Heavy Stock for more stability, recoil, and it's going to give us some movement speed. RB Rapid Strike Grip for aim down and sprint out, and then I use the Jack Glassless Optic, but use the optic of your choice. If you want a 40 round mag, I would absolutely drop the Rapid Strike Grip and throw on the 40, or you can go with Iron Sights and throw on the 40. The next one I want to talk about is the Static HV, because this thing has an absurd range and is essentially an AR while you're in MP. It has that much range. This gun is absolutely top tier meta. Every mode in this game, we all know it, and this build has zero recoil, and it keeps you off the map. It also has an incredible sprint out and aim down sight speed, and that's why we start with the Shadow Strike Suppressor, just to keep us off of the map. We use the Garrett 8 Long Barrel to up our range, velo, and get a little recoil control. Paracord Grip to remove any form of horizontal recoil, as well as up our sprint to fire and movements. Jack Glassless or Optic of your choice, and then the Salvo 580 Heavy Stock for stability, recoil, all of that good stuff, and make this gun have literally zero recoil and be able to take fights to the 40 or even 50 meter range. Static HV is incredible and it's a lot of fun in S and D or any mode really. All right, so I'm gonna give you snipers now and there are two that I'm using currently and they're the ones I'm going to give you. Number one, the SPX 80 is the best sniper in MP, bar none, especially search and destroy. And for this build, we're gonna use the Sonic Suppressor to up our range and our velocity. We're gonna use the 22 and a half inch Elevate Barrel, which is gonna up our ADS and make this gun snappy. Don't worry about the little bit of loss in your range because you're going to one shot anywhere above the waist at all times. DMR precision stock for stability, the Schlager match grip to up ADS and sprint to fire, and then we're using the ST87 bolt to get shots off as fast as we can. SPX80 is surprisingly good for being a Modern Warfare 2 gun. However, it is not the only Modern Warfare 2 gun that is at the top of the meta in multiplayer. The M13B or M13 Bravo is one of the best ARs in the game and no one's using it. This thing absolutely slaps in every mode of Call of Duty and I just, I love this gun and it treats me good. For the build, we're going to use a Scratch 20 Suppressor because this is going to give us a ton of stability while firing and it's only going to cost us 1% of ADS speed. Paracord Grip for Sprint to Fire as well as removing all horizontal recoil. 45 round mag because this gun has an absurd fire rate. Ruin Flash Grip to up Sprint to Fire and ADS speeds. Then I'm using the Glassless but you can use the Optic of of your choice. The M13B is absolutely a top 5 AR. And then your other sniper option is of course the Car 98 because it's the Car 98. This one is a lot of fun because it is more of a snappy, aggressive sniper. You can absolutely quick scope people at 5 meters and you can still clap them at 200 meters if you can find that sight line in MP. For this build we're going to use the Sonic Suppressor to up our range and our velo. DR6 hand stop for aim down sight, sprint to fire because TTKs are so fast here. Recon sling for the flinch, a little bit of stability, the repeller tack stop just to make
make this thing more snappy. And then the Forge Tac Delta is my optic. It lets you reload super quick and it gives you a full six times zoom. Car 98K feels real good. We all know it. Another gun that absolutely dominates in multiplayer. I love this for search and destroy. Like I said, this is my search list. That is the HRM9. The HRM9 never left the meta. It absolutely fries. And we're actually going to start with the Tacturn 7 suppressed barrel because this is going to hurt our range, but it's not a big deal. The amount of aim down sight, sprint to fire, and recoil we get out of it is just incredible. Paracord grip removes all horizontal recoil, which this gun pulls hard to the left without it. We've got the TAC handler grip on here to up ADS and sprint to fire. You can drop this off and use high grain if you want. Folding stock to remove the rest of the recoil. And then the 50 round drum. Again, if you want an optic, you can drop the TAC handler grip. Or if you want high grain and the optic, drop the stock and the handler grip, throw them on. The HRM9 is absolutely incredible. Another gun that has never let me down is the Baz B or the Baz Bravo. This thing hits like an absolute truck and you can dominate entire lanes with this gun. And we're gonna once again start with a Scratch 20 suppressor to give us a bunch of firing aim stability. We're gonna use the Bruin Venom Long Barrel because this does not hurt our ADS, but it gives us range and velo as well as recoil control. DR6 hand stop for sprint to fire, aim down sight and movement. I have the Quarters Classic as my optic. Use the one of your choice. And then 30 rounds is more than enough for MP. However, you absolutely do need to use a larger mag because 20 ain't gonna cut it. Baz B is absolutely phenomenal. It has AR ADS speeds and the punch of a battle rifle. Bouncing back over to submachine guns, however, the Ram 9 is another gun that still absolutely fries in multiplayer. The Ram 9 with its incredible fire rate and its almost no recoil with some of these newer attachments make it absolutely a heater in MP. This gun will fry out to about 30 to 35 meters and it is incredibly aggressive. We're going to start with the quartermaster suppressor here to remove all of our recoil from this gun and allow us to use the rest of our attachments to up our movement and ADS. Armistice light barrel so we can get ADS movement, all of that. DR6 hand stop movement, aim down sight, sprint to fire. Jack glassless because the irons are decent here. I just like having an optic. Then we're going to use the 40 round mag because it's more than enough. If you're okay with the irons, I would absolutely take off the jack glassless and throw on the motion tack pad to up your sprint to fire and aim down sight. Or you could use the ultra light stock pad to up your movement and sprint speeds. It's entirely up to you which one of these you use instead of the optic. Ram 9, absolutely incredible, not going anywhere. And then, all right, we need to talk about the MCW 6.8 because if you're good with a semi-auto, you can beat everyone at every range with this because the TTK of a two shot is absolutely incredible. This gun is silly good because it starts with an incredible bullet velocity. So you do not have to worry about upping that. So for the build, I'm using the Shatter Strike Suppressor. However, you can use the Sonic Suppressor if you want to. Just mind that it will add a little bit to your sprint to fire. DR6 hand stop for the same reason as always. 30 round mag is more than enough here. And then we use the Rapid Strike Grip for ADS and sprint to fire. I've got the Jack NRG as my optic. However, you can use the optic of your choice. Anything up to a four or five times zoom is perfectly viable here because this gun decimates at long range, but it can also be used like an AR or even up close like an SMG. The MCW 6.8 absolutely slaps. And with this build, you do have a bullet velocity of 930 and an effective damage range of almost 41 meters. But with every new season, we get a new gun and we got an AR this season. So it's absolutely at the top of the meta in every mode. We all know it. Let's break down the build for the STG 44. And of course, we're going to start with the Scratch 20 suppressor to give firing aim stability and make this thing shoot straight as ever. We're going to then use the Heinrichter barrel for more stability, but also velo and range so we can absolutely clap targets at any range. Paracord grip so we can remove all horizontal recoil from this gun. A70 Venom stock for aim and sprint to fire, as well as a little bit of movement speed. And I'm actually using the AMOP V4 for old time's sake here. However, you could use the optic of your choice. This gun doesn't have any recoil and you can absolutely slap people anywhere on the map and it has sprint outs and aim downs that are respectable enough to take on SMGs and shotguns up close. The STG is an absolute monster.
monster. And while we're speaking about monsters, we've got to talk about last year's monster because it got a huge buff with season five, making it an absolute demon in all modes once again. I put this in the word zone video, you all saw it, and I'm sure if you used it, you know it absolutely slaps. Same can be said while in multiplayer. We're actually gonna start with the Quartermaster Suppressor to remove a ton of recoil here and keep us off the minimap. FTAC SP10 for our aim stability as well as more horizontal recoil control. 45 round mag is a must here because the fire rate is absurd on this gun, much like the M13B. Phantom grip gives so much to aim down and sprint out, absolutely a requirement. And then once again, for old time's sake, AMOP V4 in my case, or optic of your choice. If you do not need an optic and you want to use the irons, I would absolutely put on either a laser or hollow point actually, because hollow point is so good in this game. It gives a faux flinch as well as stops them from being able to bunny hop on you. So there are your options for this build. The M4 is absolutely a top five AR. I love this thing. Give it a shot if you haven't used it in a while. Bouncing back over to submachine guns, I've got the FJX Horus, and this is the most aggressive gun on this list. The Horus is able to take fights to about 22 meters with ease, so you're going to do your maximum damage in about 11 meters range. This thing is absurd right now, and I'm sure we all know it. We're going to start with the Quartermaster Suppressor to remove essentially all of the recoil from this gun. We're going to use the OP SMG foregrip, which is exclusive to this gun, to up our movement, aim down, and sprint out. 60 round drum because there's no reason to run the 48. They have the same reload time, the same ADS penalties, and the same movement penalties. They have the same stats, so use the extra 12 rounds. Ripper light stock to allow us to move faster, aim faster, and sprint out faster. And then I've got the Jack Glassless optic on here. You can use the optic of your choice, or you can drop the optic and throw on the POC rear grip to make this thing even snappier. The FGX Horus is absolutely incredible. You know it, so try this build and you'll absolutely slay. It's good in tax stance as well. But all right, we actually need to talk about my absolute favorite rifle in MP, bar none, because it feels so much like the AMAX did during Modern Warfare 2019. That is the MTZ 7.62 with the aftermarket part kit, making this thing absolutely incredible. And with this build, of course, we start with the Jack Heretic kit, changing this down to 7.62 by 39 instead of 7.62 by 51, making it hit like a truck, have a faster fire rate, and feel like an AR. Quartermaster Suppressor removes a ton of recoil, but this gun also has a ton of recoil. So we're going to throw on the paracord grip to remove all horizontal. It will kick up a little bit, but that's not a big deal. MTZ precision barrel to up our range, velo, and get aiming stability. So we can hit shots at cross maps. Another one that can absolutely control a lane with ease. And once again, I'm really liking the aim out V4 again on these guns that are built for more mid-range fights. So that's what I'm using. Use the optic of your choice. If you're okay with the irons, I would absolutely throw on the sprint to fire rear stock just so you are more viable in those close range fights. This gun can handle itself anywhere. Just remember it is a battle rifle at base and you will do absolutely fine. Another gun that is able to absolutely lock down a lane and absolutely dumps like a truck is the TAC Eradicator. This gun is incredible in Warzone and it's incredible in multiplayer as well. This has been my go-to the last couple of days in Search and Destroy. I'm having a ton of fun with it. It feels like a battle rifle even though it is an LMG. We're gonna use the Scratch 20 Suppressor because we need to get stability into this gun as much as we can, being as heavy as it is. Paracord grip to remove all of that horizontal recoil, as well as up our sprint to fire. 45 round mag makes the gun more snappy, and 45 is more than enough for MP. FSS Ole V laser to make the gun more snappy once again, as well as get stability. This makes this thing an absolute demon. Now you have two options here. You can throw in an optic, like I have the Corio REX Pro, use the optic of your choice, or you can take off the optic and use the ADS rear grip. It's entirely up to you. Both are absolutely viable. This is how I prefer it. It absolutely slays. I went 37 and 7 in my last game, just for instance, of hardpoint. And then we need to talk about the other of the top five ARs of the game, and that is the MTZ 556, another gun that is able to slap down a lane or just absolutely demolish people at longer ranges and up close. We're going to start once again with a scratch 20 suppressor. You can use the quartermaster here if you want, but it's going to make you slower and you won't have as much stability. I prefer the Scratch 20. FTAC, SP10 angle grip, horizontal recoil and stability. Can't go wrong here with that. 50 round is 
absolutely needed because this gun fires very fast. The rival A script to up our sprint to fire and aim downs. And I've got the SC SRO7 as my optic. It does the same thing as the Jack Glassless, but it's a two times instead of a one times. You can use the optic of your choice. I just love this one. MTZ556, strong as ever. It absolutely slaps. And then, all right, I got one more to talk to you about, and it's an LMG, but it's 300 black, and it's extremely snappy, so it feels somewhere between an SMG and an AR. That is the Bruin Mark 9 with the aftermarket kit. Most people forget this exists, but it absolutely destroys, and it comes with a suppressor. So we're going to start with the Shadow Titan aftermarket part and throw in the Tor 56 stock to up all of our movement stats, aim down, sprint out, etc. I'm throwing on the 1 milliwatt Artemis laser to get my aim stability. That way I can run the paracord to maximize my horizontal recoil control. And then once again, I'm loving the aim up V4 right now. So that is the optic I'm using, but you can use the Mark III reflector or any other optic of your choice. The Shadow Titan Bruin Mark IX is absolutely at the top of the meta. No one's using it and it absolutely destroys. If you haven't used this thing in multiplayer, give it a shot because it absolutely destroys people. I can't say it enough. This is probably my favorite gun to run in search right now, especially on the attacker side. And all right, y'all, I don't even know how many guns I just gave you, but that is everything that I have used in the last two weeks within Search and Destroy or any other multiplayer mode. I hope you enjoy them. If there's guns that you want to build for within multiplayer, make sure to let me know. But until next time, leave me alone and like the video. They left me alone.